when you look about what is incoming in the next year, you see very interesting issues. For example, in the French Vent de Colère case, the court will look at the legality of the French renewable super scheme under state aid law. If you look in another uh, case in the Netherlands, the court will look at whether a green certificate scheme uh, forbidding the use of guarantees of origin is a restriction of the free movement of goods. In still another case, the, the court will look at whether a company needs to be aware of damages from the acts of the EU institutions. If we look now about the future, about what is going to happen, to my mind at least, at the court in the incoming years, I would see several developments. First, of course, the third liberalization package. We have already several cases at the court. It concerns congestion management, it concerns unbundling, it concerns delay on post-position, but for several years, I think it's going to be like with the first and second package, you will have infringement proceedings concerning application of the third, li third liberalization package, and most probably you will have several preliminary rulings referred by national courts to the EU court to clarify some issue of the third package. Then, second development is that since the Lisbon Treaty, we have had this article 194, so a real energy article within the treaty. So we have to see how it impacts the policy of the Commission. Is the Commission taking decision on the basis of 194 or on other legal basis? So you have problems of competence, uh, problems of misuse of power. We have had an interesting case lately. It was, I think, in November last year involving the, the European Parliament. Uh, looking at this problem of legal basis, and I think we'll, ha we'll have uh, new cases about that, for example, in the context of the EU ETS legislation in Commission version Poland lately, this problem once again was touched, was touched upon. Third development is the creation of ACER, as I was, as I was uh, saying earlier, you have a new EU institutions uh, concretely, completely devoted to energy, this institution has new powers, for example, on merchant transmission investment, and then it seems on remit. So then uh, you can contest before the court the decision of ACER. Fourth development, I think that is very interesting at the moment, is the inter interface between EU law and international law. We have a lot of, uh, we have several uh, uh, arbitration proceedings at the moment. Uh, this is a big issue. Uh, we, you see that EU law is getting more and more intrusive. For example, with the unbundling policy, uh, if uh, EU law uh, conflicts with some protection that is granted by, by these EU bilateral investment treaties, then you have a conflict between EU law and international law, and I can tell you that these conflicts are always very hard to settle. I think, so fifth development and last development, uh, I think is the coming back uh, to the state in energy market regulation, uh, especially through uh, the promotion of renewables and all about greening the economy. So you can see, for example, the plan in the UK to have these very long-term contracts with nuclear producers, uh, to have these capacity mechanisms. I mean, the state is coming back in, which, which uh, creates a new state aid issues. You have also, also the issue of the implementation of the EU ETS legislation that is, uh, that is ongoing all the time. So all these issues, I think, will create new strand of cases at the EU court, and so the EU court will have an even bigger impact, I think, in the future. So a few concluding remarks. The, court, the European Court of Justice as a regulator, of course not, not in the typical sense, but in the way it controls the decision of the institutions, the way it harmonizes and clarifies EU energy law and policy for the whole Europe, and you have to keep in mind that the case law of the court is binding on all actors and all public authorities all over Europe. So a very big impact in that way through the four mechanisms we depicted in the beginning. Then what concrete effects on liberalization? Well, cross-border trade, big one. Market design at national, at national level, a bit less. But, and it's my own opinion, there has been a fairly clear pro-market opening sense in the case law of the court. Third, 
you have to keep in mind that there, are, uh, there is a big impact also of cases in other sectors. This is the court of law. So if a principle or something is settled in another area, another sector, of course it applies to energy, to, uh, to energy companies. So of course uh, you have to keep in mind that to look at all cases, let's say, across the world to see what is relevant or not for you in the EU court. Then, a last piece of advice. If you're coming before the court, uh, get a good lawyer. It's a very technical uh, litigation. It's not a matter of luck. It's not a matter of chance. It's complicated. So take a good lawyer. So thank you for your attention and see you in court.